Vale, bona tarda. Estem molt contents de ser aquí amb Bob Lenz, que ve directament de Califòrnia. Pels qui no el conegueu, Bob Lenz és un dels màxims experts en PBL, que és aprenentatge basat en projectes. És el CEO de PBL Works, que és una organització que el que fa sobretot és assessorar governs per implementar l'aprenentatge basat en projectes en les escoles. És una persona molt, molt, molt interessant, que té un discurs sobre educació molt interessant, que abraça molt el que nosaltres fem a l'horitzó des dels inicis dels nostres temps. Aleshores és un honor i un privilegi poder parlar amb ell avui. Hem fet una sessió de treball molt interessant, li hem explicat l'escola, li hem ensenyat projectes i hem estat amb ell perquè ens pogués fer una mica de feedback també de la manera com treballem els projectes aquí a l'escola. Bob Lenz, thank you so much for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Today. Um, uh, I'm very interested uh, in talking about uh, how PBL works. And uh, I don't know if you could tell us uh, why do you think that students who work with PBL are uh, more ready to face the challenges that uh, the future will bring to them? Challenges that are very unknown because yes. uh, we don't know how the future will be. Well, we uh, believe that we actually live in a project-based world. Yeah. So, um, and unfortunately, um, the world has changed dramatically over the last hundred years. Um, I would say the world's changed dramatically maybe even the last five years. Mm -hmm. But um, for the most part, our educational system hasn't changed. So the challenges of the 21st century are educating students for a world that is rapidly changing, for jobs that might not even exist today, and we are preparing students for, an, currently in the traditional system, for an industrial era. So project-based learning allows students to learn the academic content and skills that they are necessary that are transferable across uh, time. Uh, but it also, at the same time, allows students to learn how what we call success skills. So critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, collaboration, working in teams, um, managing projects. Um, and I think for me, even more importantly as a in my experience as a project-based learning teacher and a leader of project-based learning schools, is it gives students a sense of agency to tackle the problems in their own lives, in their community, and hopefully um, our world. Yeah. Um, you were also talking about uh, meaningful uh, learning. This is very important also in, P in P PBL, I think, no? Yes. Both. Uh, it's critical in project-based learning that both we have sustained inquiry. Yeah. So we're beginning with questions rather than teachers telling students what they need to know. Um, and then equally important that it be meaningful, relevant, authentic, either to their lives, to hmm. the world outside, um, and maybe in, in professions. Um, that connection between question and authenticity yeah. is quite powerful. Yeah. And um, we find that when students are in project-based learning schools, uh, it's different from when they come home from traditional schools. So when you come home from a traditional school, you say, oh, how was school today? And they say, or what happened? Yeah. And it's like, nothing, <laughs> same. Yeah. But uh, when students come home from project-based learning schools, they want to talk to their parents or the people that are home with them about what they're learning, uh, asking them questions, because it's meaningful and relevant to them. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is agency for you? What, what do you mean with agency? Uh, agency is a, uh, for me, is a sense of empowerment yeah. that you look uh, you can look inside and say I can make a difference mm. that I am not a, a victim yeah. who is going or a passerby yeah. 
uh, who's just going to watch the world, I'm actually going to get involved. And I have the skills and the knowledge to make a difference in my family, in my community, um, in my country. Yeah, and this is one of the most important difference I saw from the students who come from a traditional way of learning and those who come from a project-based learning that uh, they really feel that they can make an impact in their world. Sometimes yes. they begin like in their uh, closest community and sometimes they really like have very clear that they want to make an impact in a very big scale uh, but this sense of okay I'm, I'm in charge or I can I can make an impact this is very this is very different from and maybe it's true that this is one of the things that we need the most uh, in order to face the future yes. and to collaborate with our partners and to be able to solve uh, pro problems also and to managing like projects also, yeah, it's true. And even in the most, um, I completely agree with you, yeah. and even the more pragmatic way of preparing students to go to university, mm -hmm. to have a sense of agency, to seek out help, yeah. to find the resources they need, to go to their professors when they are confused, or then to have the agency and the empowerment to get a job. These are all very practical. Yeah. Um, and both having a sense that you can make a difference in the world and it's always good to be able to um, get a job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah even uh, some issues with mental health that we are facing now with teenagers most of all. I, there are lots of, stu there are lots, lots of um, studies that says that uh, teenagers are facing now like lots of problems mm -hmm. with uh, with um, mental health issues sometimes they are related to this feeling of that things they are uh, having around them are meaningless so being connected with the ultimate meaning of education of the things they they are learning yes. it's a it's a it's a very good way also to take care of their mental health and they are connected in, in a project-based learning approach yeah. to their teacher in a way that to an adult who they know cares about them um, outside of their parents or other family. Um, and they're connected to their peers yes. in a way that is healthy. Yeah. Um, not online, but in real person yeah. uh, working to make it, you know, to learn and to make a product or, or a difference. Yeah. So what do, what would you tell uh, to people who think that PBL, like projects uh, or project-based learning, uh, is not good with content. So we have to sacrifice some content in order to work with uh, PBL. Um, I say that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, when we work with teachers to design projects or when we design projects to give to teachers to adapt, we start with content um, so that we're assured that the, and the outcomes that I mentioned earlier are both academic content and skills as well as the um, success skills are both happening. Mm -hmm. So you have to be intentional to design for that. Um, I think most importantly that by learning content in the context of a project, as a, uh, that you're more likely to, this is based on uh, learning research and brain research, that people are more likely to remember and recall the information that they learned in the content uh, later, especially yeah. on test, yeah. as opposed to the traditional way of learning, which is content in one side, content out after the test. Yes. Um, there was a, a study was done with students taking a test and they had the normal curve of outstanding, middle, low, and the same students on a traditional test, six weeks later, they all were low scores um, because they only learned the content for the test, not because they had to uh, apply it. Yeah, in a conversation we were having earlier, you were uh, relating the, the way we learn with context. 
Yes. No? We, we remember, it's easier for us to remember the things we learn or to learn, to deeply learn things if we learn them with context. No? Exactly. Mm -hmm. If we understand why we're doing what we're doing. And you were also talking about metacognition, no? This, yes. This process that, uh, to understand why we're learning and what we're learning. Yes, one of the, uh, our gold standard for project-based learning yeah. component is reflection. Yes. So we don't consider projects that don't include reflection as actually high standard. Yeah. And it's usually, uh, unfortunately, the last thing, the, the thing that gets left out. Mm -hmm. um, and we believe it's the most important, that students are reflecting on what they learned, not only in the skills, but also in the content. Um, can we talk a little bit more about reflection? Because for you, it's a word that uh, you're very used to use it. But for us, maybe because of what you said, that uh, is the most difficult thing to do while we are learning, uh, it's a very difficult word to understand. Before, you were making like this kind of triangle yes. uh, about learning. And you were saying, OK, we have like the, the know, the do, and reflect. No, so the things we 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 know, and it's like almost an intellectual thing. Then we can do no, we can apply this knowledge on things we do. Tell us about reflection. What is it exactly? Re reflection, and and why is it uh, so important in project-based learning? So reflection is a process of of metacognition. So thinking about your own thinking. Yeah. Uh, which is, that's why we use the word reflection, because yeah. <laughs> that's very complex. Yeah. Uh, in order to uh, help students reflect, we give them prompts, mm -hmm. like, uh, what did you learn in this project that you will uh, apply the next time you do a project? Exactly, yeah. What was something in the project that didn't or work well? How would you do it the next time? Mm -hmm. What was the most challenging part of this project? Mm -hmm. And what did you learn from that challenge? So how, how, giving the students uh, practice at asking these questions um, eventually becomes a habit. Yeah. But at the beginning, students will say it makes their brain hurt. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, we think of that no do reflect as a holistic way to assess learning. Yeah. So knowing, taking tests, quizzes, reports, and then doing projects where you have to demonstrate and apply, yeah. and you assess it using different tools like a rubric or some mm -hmm. criteria. And reflection is really some very personal. There's not, you can't really assess it other than to provide the process for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you be good or bad at reflection? No. It's just you your can, own you process? Can, you can be good and better. Yeah, OK. <laughs> OK, yeah. OK, good, good, good. Um, what kind of evidences do you have? Uh, I don't know, for families that uh, are not very aware of uh, project-based uh, learning, what kind of evidence uh, do you have that project-based learning works to learn the contents or, mm -hmm. know, or, or, to, or to be successful? Yes. But I would say that, um, first of all, the most powerful evidence is found like, in the school, like right here. Yeah. By talking to students, by reading their novels, mm -hmm. uh, by the presentations of learning each trimester where students share their projects. That is the most powerful way mm -hmm. to see the evidence of project-based learning. I would imagine it must be wonderful to be a parent here, to go to parent conferences when the, parents, the children are younger, and then to be in a conference with the, the student when they're about ready to move on to through commencement. Yeah. Um, we also believe that it's important to have more empirical evidence. So in the United States, we uh, have studies that have been done to show that uh, students in from first and second grade, third and fifth grade, um, and in secondary um, 
are learning more content in a random control study based on state test yep. um, than students who are not doing project-based learning. Mm -hmm. But we also have evidence in the United States that students who do project-based learning are more likely to go to college and to graduate from college. Mm -hmm. um, and we think it's important that you both understand the heart of project-based learning, but then the parents and others need to know that there's actually data yeah. that backs up that feeling that you see. Yeah. So you see and you think, I think my student's learning and then to have some evidence um, on large scale. So you have the feeling because of the school, no? because of the things you see at school that the students are learning, you have the evidences, and sometimes uh, from the outside you can feel like there's no structure on uh, on project based learning mm -hmm. because you no know, uh, sometimes you see like the students talking or there's noise or they're working in groups uh, but you have your golden your gold standards that are like a very structured uh, method no so yes. can you talk us can you speak a little bit about your gold standards so uh, we at the uh, Previously, we were the Buck Institute for Education, now PBO Works. We developed a set of standards for project-based learning teaching mm -hmm. and project-based learning design. And there's seven standards for each, and they codify what high-quality project-based learning, um, that if you do it this way, you're more likely to get the results of, uh, mm -hmm. of the learning. And the results you mean like learning content, learning content and learning skills? Learning skills yeah. and getting a sense of agency. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that's the, uh, it's important that the, that standard become a, a way to reflect for teachers and mm -hmm. schools to reflect on the quality of the projects that yes. they're doing to continue to improve. Mm -hmm. So it's always it's same as reflection. Yeah. It's good and it's better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's like a reflection for schools and for yes. teachers. Because one of the things that we also found is that um, uh, project-based learning is very good for students, but it's also very good for teachers. Which it's is a great. surprise also because uh, it's much like it's much fun and and you have also like this feeling of empowerment and to be able to to be in control, no? Even if it if at the beginning it, it seems like you're losing control because it's it's easier to have like the whole class in silence and you are transmitting like some knowledge. Right. You you. Maybe you, you feel like you are in control, but you're not in control. You're only in control of what you're saying, but not on what the students are, uh, are re receiving. Uh, I like to go into classrooms yeah. and ask the students what they're working on. Yeah. And most often, when the teacher is talking, the students are not actually yeah, they are thinking about what the teacher is saying. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and I shared that. Uh, when I go um, into offices, you see adults working in teams, talking, yes. sharing. Yeah. Um, it's not silent. Um, it's mostly collaborative. Yes. There's some time that's silent. You have work to get done, but it's back and forth. Mm -hmm. School can be the same way. Yeah, it's like the movement of the heart. Like sometimes it compresses and sometimes mm -hmm. it dashes out. No, but yeah, yeah exactly. Okay, Bob, now that you've been a little bit with us, uh, you, you spent the day with us, you've been uh, walking around the school, you met some teachers, you uh, met some of the projects that we've been doing, you could uh, talk to students. Um, what do you think about our school? Is there anything that you would like to, I don't know, something that surprises you or something? What did you like the most? Is there anything that, I don't know, can, you can help us with? Mm -hmm. like what, what kind of feeling do you have with the school? Well, I have very warm feelings. <laughs> okay. And I think I told you earlier that I, um, if I lived in Barcelona, <laughs> when my children were young, I would send them to this school, <laughs> which for me is usually the highest praise for a school. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I was impressed, um, very impressed with the l 
actually multi-year project that culminates in the students publishing their work, the mm -hmm. novel, a play, a book of poetry, and that it is a scaffold from the primary age up to um, 10th grade. Uh, the maker space and the integration with Mickey yeah, Mickey, yeah. Into working collaboratively with the teachers mm -hmm. as they design and his approach of uh, working for them to have to produce solutions rather than him provide it. Yeah. Um, and then students uh, making. Um, the, uh, the sense of, of community and warmth in the school uh, and the relationship between students with each other and students with the adults mm -hmm. is quite beautiful. Aquesta part, si em permeten, la traduiré perquè ens quedi clar, perquè o sigui, ens ha agradat molt també tenir el Bob Lenz aquí i, i ara li preguntava sobre quines coses li havien agradat molt de l'escola. Uh, ens deia amb molt de carinyo que si ell hagués de portar els seus fills a alguna escola i visqués a Barcelona els portaria aquí perquè... Una de les coses que més li ha agradat és eh, els projectes aquests que tenim que duren molts anys. Eh, saben que els alumnes a tercer i quart de l'AES escriuen una novel·la, però que aquest projecte de creació literària no comença a tercer i quart, sinó que és un projecte que comença quan fan les reunions de treball, eh, quan són més petits i després fan el text lliure quan ja són una miqueta més grans i que és un projecte que és, no, que és inter, interany, no, intercurs, i que comença des del principi fins que a que aquest projecte l'ha interessat moltíssim. També ens ha parlat de l'espai maker i de com, abord... Perdó, de com abordem la tecnologia a l'escola. Ha conegut el senyor Miki, que el senyor Miki és com la persona que prove... proveeix de solucions quan nosaltres tenim una pregunta, no? Eh, eh, quan nosaltres tenim un projecte i necessita una solució tecnològica, el Miki és el que guia els alumnes perquè ells sols trobin la seva pròpia solució tecnològica. I llavors aquest Spy Maker li hem ensenyat alguns dels projectes i alguns dels productes finals que, havien, que havíem tingut eh, relacionats amb la tecnologia i també li han semblat molt interessants. També la col·laboració que fa el senyor Miki amb els mestres de, de cada grup, eh, que no és el senyor Miki amb, a la seva, sinó que hi ha molta col·laboració amb els mestres. Eh, ha dit que li agrada molt aquest sentit de comunitat que ha pogut percebre mentre caminava pels passadissos i d'escalfó, de entre no, la manera com es tracten els alumnes de diferents edats i com es relacionen també amb els adults que... Que, que els envolten. O sí, sigui que per nosaltres realment és un, bueno, és un orgull que una persona com el Bob Lenz pugui dir coses tan maques sobre l'escola. També ens ha dit coses que podem millorar i també ja ens hem posat ja amb els caps tots a pensar i a, i a, a intentar millorar-les per complir una mica aquests estàndards que deia el Bob Lenz de com, han de ser, com ha de ser l'educació basada en projectes. O sigui, jo crec que ens hem de quedar amb aquestes tres idees. Primer, que l'educació basada en projectes em prepara millor els alumnes per la, per la, pels, eh, pels reptes que vindran. Estem educant a uns alumnes per una societat que encara no sabem com serà. El Bob deia que hi ha molts, eh, molts dels nostres alumnes tindran feines que encara no existeixen, que les hauran de crear de zero i per tant que necessiten eh, successful skills, que diu ell, no? o sigui, habilitats eh, perquè tinguin èxit i que passen per ser bons resolutors de problemes, per treballar bé eh, de manera col·laborativa, per no tenir por de la pregunta, eh, per, no, per, per ser capaços de, pla de planificar bé eh, de, i, i de fer aquestes eh, reflections, que deia ell, no? aquestes com reflexions que formen part de l'aprenentatge i que per nosaltres encara és una cosa a, eh, bueno, que costa molt de fer fins i tot com a adults, no? aquesta metacognició de com aprenem i de què hem après, eh, eh, què hem après quan hem acabat, quan hem acabat un, un projecte. La segona idea important és que tenim evidències científiques de que l'aprenentatge basat en projectes funciona i funciona vol dir que en uns eh, tests estàndards eh, de, 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 o sigui, que avaluen continguts 
el Bob, una de las cosas que deia era que tenim evidències que, que els alumnes aprenen els continguts igual o millor que si fan eh, educació tradicional, sobretot perquè estan eh, més engaged, o sigui, com més compromesos amb el que estan aprenent, se senten més partícips d'aquest aprenentatge i sobretot perquè tenen un context. O sigui, està demostrat que la memòria a llarg termini funciona millor si està connectada a un context. O sigui, et parlava de, de tests que s'havien fet i que el que deien era que que quan tu feies un, un test a uns alumnes que havien estudiat feia poc de la manera tradicional, doncs tenies tot l'arc, no? teníem alumnes que havien tret molt bona nota, alumnes que havien suspès, alumnes que havien fet normal, però que quan els repeties el test sis mesos després, doncs gairebé tots eh, suspenien perquè no retenien aquest coneixement. En canvi, amb l'aprenentatge basat en projectes, com que està tot dintre del context, o sigui, l'aprenentatge que fas està contextualitzat, eh, aleshores eh, és molt més fàcil retenir-ho. I després ens parlava també d'aquests gold standards que fa que ens assegurem que l'aprenentatge basat en projectes tingui una estructura. O sigui, no és una cosa boja, que, no? sinó que té una estructura, té unes passes concretes i que ells han desenvolupat, un, han desenvolupat aquests gold standards que el que fan és assegurar que amb bon guiatge i amb bona formació dels mestres, que és bàsicament el que fa el Bob amb, amb PBL Works, amb guiar els mestres i formar els mestres perquè puguin aplicar l'aprenentatge basat en projectes d'una manera satisfactòria i que els porti a l'èxit. Um, jo crec que ens quedem, que ens quedem amb, aquestes, amb aquestes idees. Before, just one last thing before you said uh, when, uh, a sentence that was like very powerful. You said, uh, correct me if I'm saying it wrong, but you said something like life is not a test, it's a project. Yes. No, I think that's a very powerful idea mm. to, to end the, the interview with. I think that's, that's a very powerful idea, no? que la vida no és un test, és un projecte. I per tant hem de preparar els nostres alumnes per ser capaços de fer aquests projectes i no per aprovar un test. It's a project-based world. Exactly, it's a project-based world. És un món basat en projectes. Jo crec que amb aquesta idea ens quedem. Bob, thank you so much. I hope it's oh. not the last time we, we can it, talk a little bit. It definitely will not be. Okay. My pleasure is all mine. Thank you, Bob. <laughs>